Welcome to the Second Drafts Podcast, everything you need to write, edit, and publish your way. I'm Jeremy. And I'm EJ. And today on Second Drafts, we'll be talking about writing a series versus a single story. When starting out in writing, uh, obviously you kind of will fall into either one of those categories. I don't know if there's really much option otherwise. <laughs> either a single story or a series. And Mm -hmm. uh, we just want to kind of look over what the pros and cons might be of each and see which one you might want to try when you're starting out on your writing. Uh, Mm -hmm. Obviously, first off, we'll say what we have our preferences for. (laughs) Myself, personally, (laughs) uh, I definitely like uh, doing a series but I still do want to eventually do something on the single story end of things too. Uh, I was thinking like a connected universe type thing almost where there are separate single stories you can read on your own, but there's kind of tidbits in amongst that mm, relate to each other. Kind of shares between them. Yeah. Yeah, that's always fun to do. So what do you have for your preference? Uh, well, for reading... Um... I do like series as well, mainly because I like fantasy a lot. Mm-hmm. But I now and then certain stories just they work fantastically as as standalones. You know, I'm thinking about things like horror stories, <laughs> where usually if you you know you see that in horror movies as well. As soon as you try to make a sequel, you kind of ruin the mystery about it all. Yeah. By the time you're you know about the when you're hitting the ninth movie in a series, I'm not going to name any <laughs> names, uh, it starts to get a bit thin. So yeah. sometimes a nice one-off scary movie or book can be fantastic. So yeah, you kind of... It differs <laughs> according to my mood, I suppose. <laughs> as far as writing, though, I know that uh, you've kind of started a series, but do you oh, prefer yes. series, or was there like a thought, like a thought process uh, behind starting a series, or...? Yeah, I I think because I was inspired by Robert Jordan's books, mm-hmm. I think it's always kind of been a series in the back of my mind. But I, I I prefer series writing them. I think part of what drives that is when I think of some really cool idea for a story concept, I always first think, "Wow, that's so cool! How am I going to fit it into my current set of stories?" You know, it's never. How am I going to make a brand new story out of this? <laughs> yeah. It almost, I don't know, it almost feels like a waste to not give my current series all the benefit of all the best, like, mini stories it can tell. Yeah. And that's, I don't think that's a good thing. <laughs> I think it's, 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 it's a bit limiting. So I, that's something I need to work on. Definitely. Well, I mean, uh, <laughs> I definitely understand that. You want to give your best ideas to something that, it's going to be a long running, so it's mm, for sure exactly. understandable. Some <laughs> ideas, I'm sure, you can't really uh, put in there. Like if you have a sci-fi type thing, <laughs> can't really yeah, uh, inject that into fantasy, I don't think. Just, just don't dare me. I, I have an idea along those lines. <laughs> just <laughs> Steampunk? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that, that's also fun. Kind of fantasy, sci-fi-ish almost. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, it is. It, you you have some really good stories that mix those genres. So yeah, yeah I might look at doing that at some point. <laughs> so it seems like fun. Alrighty, so we'll get into the pros and cons there now. So uh, first off, we're going to say obviously if you're not comfortable in writing a single self-contained story, or if you're not comfortable with the structure or uh, length of a series, then obviously don't do it like you you want to do whatever Mm. you're most comfortable with and start there yeah no absolutely Uh, i think with art like this you know if you view your writing as art which i think you should uh it's always about the feeling that you get as the author what what seems to you to suit um i think is more important than what we can tell you to do (laughs) yeah but but also i mean having said that if if you're going to be writing as a professional author, you know, making a living out of that, you you, know, you should be aware 
of what you're planning and why you're doing it as well. And this is why we uh, would like to mention it in this episode and uh, discussing it a little bit. So yeah, there's a lot of uh, there can be a lot of extra work involved if you you know choose one path versus another. Um, so you really should think well about this. Yeah, and the first thing that I would say is if you are going to go like our route, the self-publishing route, mm -hmm. it is probably best to write a series first, and like with the most obvious reason being that you are trying to kind of build that following, and um, doing a series is the best way to do it. Like um, right now, for instance, uh, I have a couple in the main series and I have a couple side stories there and you kind of use the first in the series to build up the second and the third and the fourth and etc so it all just kind of builds in together and depending on what you do there you can build an audience over time who's going to continue to buy your books and hopefully recommend them as well yeah I think like we spoke about it last time one of the things in self-publishing that you're actually missing is that uh, that marketing machine that the big publisher can offer you. But mm -hmm. having a series when you self-publish kind of helps you. Each new release is kind of has an automatic built-in marketing component that keeps bumping up your series and adding more to it. So I think that's that's pretty useful. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like as you said there, as we were mentioning in our last one <clears throat> with legacy publishers they can help you out with marketing whereas on the self-publishing end you have to do all your marketing on your own so if say you were doing self-contained stories if every few months or a year you had to uh, market a new book and you know heaven forbid that it's even in a different genre altogether you're gonna have a very uphill battle ahead of you yeah Starting from scratch each time. Yeah. And yeah, definitely, kind of crazy. definitely with the legacy publishing there, like, it would be hard on that end as well. But there's probably a lot more examples that they would be able to draw from where they've had authors who have mm. switched over. And they would be able to help you out with that probably a lot better than you'd be able to find information online on how to do that. Mm. Yeah. I think they, they know what they're doing in some of those cases. Yeah. <laughs> so at least the other side of the coin. Oh, sorry. <laughs> at least you hope that they know that um, they know what they're doing. Yeah, there's <laughs> that. <laughs> um, then on the other side, I mean, if if you are trying to publish your work with one of those traditional publishers, um, common knowledge says they are they will almost never go for a series written by an untried, untested author that they've never worked with before. Uh, for all the years leading up to now, you know, people uh, looking for advice online have always been told, never try to do a series right away. It, it just a, a publisher won't go for that. And I think that's that's kind of true even today. If, if it's not self-publishing, if it's traditional, then, you know, you're going to have to give the publisher some way to know whether you're going to be doing well or not before they invest in an entire series. So then standalone stories are probably going to work much better for you, uh, to begin with, at least. Mm -hmm. And that, I mean, that's also going to help if uh, you keep getting rejected by publishers. Uh, <laughs> and then if you have to do rewrites and or they ask you to write something completely new, then at least you're not scrapping a whole series, you know, you're just uh, changing one story or replacing one story. Yeah, it's don't have to constantly build a new world each time that you want to go to a publisher. Yeah, yeah exactly. So it, it, it'll help. Working with publishers, standalone stories will work better. One way that uh, you can kind of straddle the line, as it were, though, uh, you can write a self-contained story, but you can just kind of plan to do more with those characters. Uh, mm -hmm. So, like, if you're going to a traditional publisher, like, you can, say, do a murder mystery, and 
most of those would be just self-contained anyway because you know you obviously want to catch the killer in the end <laughs> yeah definitely. like you don't want to have a, a moriarty type character right off the bat i wouldn't say <laughs> and uh you want to tie up all of those loose ends but uh you can turn that into a series and then it just basically takes the main character from the first one and kind of moves it forward and has a new uh like killer of the week as it were uh, mm, exactly to just draw. like the police procedurals yeah like episodes TV, yeah. yeah you can pretty much watch and enjoy any episode of castle or law and order um of course there are some some storylines that pull through but mm -hmm. you know there's some of it is quite compartmentalized yeah definitely going to be uh, a little bit more rewarding for people who have read it from the beginning but uh <laughs> It definitely, uh, I would, I would say it would be a lot easier to shop around if you're going to traditional publishers. That's just my mm. opinion, of course. I don't really have any empirical evidence <laughs> to back yeah. that up. But and I mean, another thing to consider when you're deciding about all of this is, of course, the genre. Uh, having us speak about police procedurals, yeah. Yeah. Um, now, in certain genres, it works much better to. You know, you can get away with doing a single story and it kind of works. But in other genres, it's, it's, it's quite a bit harder to write just a single story and make it big. Um, this is mainly due, I think, to, to what the audiences have become used to. Mm -hmm. Which, you know, it's not something specific to the genre, but it's the audience of the genre. So it kind of becomes the same thing. Like fantasy is the first one that <laughs> yeah. we would mention. Um, there aren't many fantasy novels, I think, that are just standalone. Not that Especially I Especially nowadays. Yeah, not not nowadays. Even, I mean, Lord of the Rings, the, the touchstone for all fantasies, that was still a, well, a big series with several volumes. Yeah. Um, I think part of why that is is just fantasy relies so much on heavy world building that you, the author just doesn't want to go to all that trouble building that whole universe just to use it in a single story. That seems a bit wasteful, doesn't it? Yeah, and it, it would definitely bog down the reader if uh, if you were trying to do that as well, I imagine. Yeah, they just kind of get the hang of your new world and its special rules, and then, well, there we go, we're done. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it wouldn't work so well. Yeah. Um, so to kind of but, sum that up... Oh, you were going to... Oh, yeah, no, I just wanted to um, add to that, to, like, the reason we're saying this is not because uh, you should do it just because everyone does it, but I think there is a bit to be said for the fact that because everyone in that genre is doing it, the audience has come to expect it that way. Mm. So you kind of flout that uh, those conventions at your own risk, Yeah, which is something to think about. And I mean, the same thing, you can try to kind of build it so that they are those self-contained stories but just kind of continue the characters even if you wanted mm -hmm. to like just have that opening kind of in mind um mm -hmm. i just thought of it actually there uh i haven't read them but i heard from other people about uh this particular series i think it's called the dresden files and it's based off of uh D, &D. i'm not sure if i have it correct there or not the name right. but uh, it's almost like a fantasy murder mystery about like magic oh, and stuff yeah. like that. And so maybe it kind of does that same thing. So okay. there could be definitely ways to do a little bit of a fantasy story <laughs> that might be kind of self-contained, but you do want to build that world and you want to, you know, build on everything that you've uh, kind of established beforehand. And that will definitely help out, I imagine, with audience building. So. <laughs> Yeah. No, it's perfectly up to each individual project. I think you really need to sit down at the beginning and think what's going to work best for this specific uh, story that I want to tell. Mm -hmm. and, you know, take it from there. Yeah. So, yeah, just to kind of sum up on those points there, like uh, at least on our opinion, of course, it might not be mm -hmm. the correct opinion, but <laughs> if uh, you're going the traditional publishing route, and writing a particular genre, it should impact uh, whether you want to write a series or not, or whether you're going to plan on writing a series. 
But, uh, of course, there are other factors. And uh, one other factor, which definitely should come into mind, is uh, money. <laughs> so if you're uh, self-publishing or going the traditional route, if you have a series and that series picks up, uh, as we kind of mentioned before, the marketing for the new books is almost already done. You kind of build that audience and they're going to hopefully be looking for the next in the series. And that just mm. is going to increase sales as it goes along. Uh, I don't mm. really have any hard numbers, but I mean, I'm, I'm sure that it's not very hard to uh, recognize the impact that a series has. And uh, on my own personal experience, uh, I know a couple times like uh, the... the uh, I'm not sure if it's called the Sword of Truth series or if it's a different name. I can't remember now off the top of my head, but uh, it's a fantasy series. And I read the first book, loved it, and I pretty much bought all of the other books in the series right after that. <laughs> I really love that. Yeah. I think that's a pretty long series as well. Yeah, I think it was uh, 11 books. Ooh. Oh. I did the same with uh, Wheel of Time. I didn't buy all of them. I bought them like a little bit slower. Uh, I already okay. talked about it in a previous podcast there, but I kind of stopped <laughs> reading them after a little while. Mm. So I'm kind of glad that I didn't buy all of them. But, you know, I might get back into it there. But I really yeah, love that first book, it. though. So <laughs> Great stuff. And um, it almost plays yeah. into, like, human nature, as it were. Like, you kind of have a puzzle that you start in the beginning of one of those books... And you kind of want to, you want to finish that. You want to finish the story, as it were. And it's like Wheel of Time and the Sword of Truth, they do the same thing. They kind of have these elements that they kind of speak to a larger series that's going on in the background. Mm. And you really... A lot of it, even if it's not a mystery genre book, it still has a lot of mystery in it mm -hmm. to keep you interested for what happens later. There was a ton of foreshadowing in Wheel of Time that things that he put into the very first book that you end up only finding out about in the 10th or 11th book. Mm -hmm. uh, fantastic foreplanning, you know, foreshadowing that Robert Jordan put in there. And yeah, a lot of that will help. Mm -hmm. I think for me as well, a lot of what happens with series, like you're talking about uh, buying more in the series, I tend to often not buy the first book in a series and I don't I hardly notice it. And then by the time the third or the fourth book rolls around I kind of take notice. Oh this is part four. Oh yeah. Uh you know, so so this must be doing pretty well if the person keeps writing this. Yeah. So then I will go back and buy number one and see what it's all about. And if I like it I'll continue reading it. So I definitely think later books in a series coming out do kind of attract new people, new interest as it goes along. It's almost kind of like its own social proof, as it were. Mm, exactly. It's, it's great stuff. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, there are, there are drawbacks, of course. Um, depending on how you handle your series, you know, the individual parts of it, uh, some reason, some readers can get frustrated. Uh, like, for instance, when your book ends on a, on a total cliffhanger, mm -hmm. it, it feels like it's not so much the ending of a book, but, as if the book has been cut in the middle and split into two, yeah. which is, is is very unfortunate. <laughs> and I would strongly recommend people not to do that. Um, yeah, you can't always be uh, always Lord be... of the Rings. <laughs> exactly. You you definitely, I mean, modern audiences, they definitely want some form of resolution. You're, you're buying the book for the book, not really for the series. Mm -hmm. um, the series is kind of like the added bonus, the added thing that you will continue reading, but if the book itself does not satisfy, you're going to pick up a lot of problems with some of your readers. And that's <laughs> um, So what I would say is, you know, resolve your main storyline, make sure there is a main storyline to resolve, and then have some secondary threads that you pull along into the second book, which will serve your series, because it will have... Um, you know, something drawing the reader on and making them curious about the second book. Mm -hmm. But preferably don't make those threads so big and so integral to the story that the book kind of 
collapses when it tries to send on its own. Yeah. That's... <laughs> We kind of fell into a, a little bit of that trap. Mm -hmm. Me more so than you, for sure. But <laughs> <laughs> uh, with our books, you're saying, uh, yeah, there was a bit of that. Um, I I honestly tried to keep it uh, standalone, but I'm I'm guessing <laughs> that it didn't work out perfectly as I planned it. But uh, I suppose the only solution at this point will be to just write the second book and get it out there. <laughs> Well, definitely um, <laughs> with yours, like, uh, at least, in t like, obviously no spoilers, but in terms of the main characters and that main plot, it definitely uh, resolved itself well. But I know that uh, when you were talking about it with me uh, before, <laughs> you kind of were worried a little bit about it. I definitely, definitely. on mine, it's uh, quite a bit worse. I'm not going to give any spoilers uh, on there <laughs> either. You just got to go read it, audience. Yeah. <laughs> Clever, very smooth. <laughs> no, I, I definitely don't think yours was. Uh, it, it didn't annoy me, if I can put it that way. It didn't actually make me feel negative about it. Okay. It was just, oh, here we go. So definitely a series thing. Up until that point, I wasn't entirely sure uh, that it would end up being a series. But then when I read that, I was like, ah, definitely a series. Okay. <laughs> um, but there is a lot of planning that comes with writing a series like this. Um, no matter the genre you're choosing, um, you always be trying to build on top of the things that wrote that you wrote in the first book. So, of course, as you go along, book after book, the story is just getting more and more complicated. Mm -hmm. uh, I almost don't think it's possible to keep it simple when you do a multi-book series. Um, and I mean, if you don't believe me, just compare the first uh, Song of Fire and Ice book to the fifth one and take a look for yourself yeah. <laughs> to how that uh, complexity has ballooned and it definitely takes work it's a lot of work to manage this and to um, keep your story straight as it were and keep everything going so seriously just be sure that's something that you're ready for and want to do before you commit to a big long multi-volume series yeah, I mean, even uh, speaking more on the Song of Ice and Fire, uh, Song of mm -hmm. Ice and Fire, there, um, I think we mentioned in a previous podcast as well. Uh, but if uh, for those who don't know, George R. R. Martin actually uh, he kind of collaborates with a fan just to keep mm -hmm. certain things straight, like this uh, super fan basically who. Uh, mm -hmm has a whole site dedicated to, like a fan site dedicated to uh, the houses and all the history and stuff like that. And uh, I've heard that if George is not sure on something, he'll contact <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> the fan there and actually uh, ask for help. And the people on the series who make the show, the Game of Thrones, they also uh, are in contact with him and he helps out on the show too so that's awesome to be that kind of dedicated fan yeah man. but just the complexity that uh comes about like obviously even for the author of the series it's uh mm. hard to keep track of so <laughs> definitely and uh there's definitely i'd say a, a fine uh, balance that you need to master when you're trying to do that because uh, even knowing when to end a series can be difficult. Like, uh, same thing, George R. R. Martin. Uh, I think he started it as a three-book series, then moved it up oh, wow. to, to a five-book, and now it's at seven. So <laughs> yeah. For now. Yeah. So he's kind of changed it around a little bit there, and probably because of... Uh, certain threads that came about just during writing, like he wanted to kind of continue that. And uh, say if it goes on for too long, I don't think that the Game of Thrones has. I'm sure that a lot of people would even like more books in there. But uh, if it goes on for too long, then the audience could get kind of a series fatigue and not want to continue on just because it's you know too long, too much of an investment. And uh, if there's a lot of time in between them, say, you might have to go back and reread some of them. And it's definitely a big time commitment for the audience as well. 
Mm. And uh, if yeah, you'll end up with only the diehard fans that are willing to go back and reread. Yeah. The others will say, oh, yeah, of course, it's book seven out of the series. I can't remember what happened. Yeah. Either I have to go read it all again, or just, you know, ugh, whatever, is it worth it? Yeah. <laughs> Which is something you don't really want to want happening to you. Hmm. And uh, on the other side of it there, if it's too short, then you could be losing out on fans or losing out on money. And mm. uh, you might not even be able to, say, tie up those loose ends or close out those uh, threads of the story that you made. So uh, true closure to the story could be lost and an unsatisfying ending could leave readers frustrated and they might not want to recommend the series anymore. Like, you know, maybe you uh, have the first couple books out, they read the second one, they love it, so they tell all their friends about it, then they read the third one, and ends, and it just is a really bad ending. And it's kind of like, well, I don't want to touch this story anymore, kind of thing, and mm. never talk about it again, as it were. <laughs> yeah, lengthwise, I think a good recommendation for fantasy is probably to try your first series at about three books. That's usually a kind of a, a good... It's not too long to bring in the fatigue, and it's not too short to be able to tell a good story. That's why I think most of the fantasy stories you'll see will typically be fantasy trilogies, and mm -hmm. I think there's a reason for that. That's kind of a good length. I mean, after you do that, and you see how the market bears your writing, how, what kinds of stories the market likes, then you can try to do something like George Martin or Robert Jordan and do this long series if, if you've become sure, you know, that it'll work. Well, and it also helps just uh, to grow as a writer, just writing mm. that short one first and then trying to kind of build it even more complex the next time. Yeah, exactly. Even George Martin, I don't think... Uh, Song of Ice and Fire wasn't even close to his first story. It was, he'd been writing for 20 years or something by then. Yeah. So I think even he didn't try to do that right out of the gate. <laughs> yeah, I mean, even looking at how long between the books. <laughs> yeah. That series has been going for 20 years now, I think. Yeah. <laughs> so. 25 even. Even on his end of things, it's very complex, so he has to take that time, hopefully, to <laughs> keep keep the story intact. <laughs> Hopefully he's not out playing D&D &D with friends or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wonder what he does to uh, wind down between writing sessions or books even. Yeah. I, uh, I always remember, uh, I think it was on the website Cracked. It's a, it's oh, a yeah. comedy website there. Uh, they did a list of different ways that the series could end if the creators really uh, had the uh, gumption to do it, as it were. And mm -hmm. with uh, George R. R. Martin's series, they said uh, it would be interesting if it ended as if it was a D&D &D session. <laughs> yeah, yeah that's, that's about how it sounds, going through how many people have died. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't. I don't think that that would be a very satisfying ending. <laughs> so yeah. it, it probably already ends that way in some of the fan fiction. Yeah, <laughs> one just has to find those. Yeah. So, uh, audience, uh, why don't you tell us what you think? Uh, what do you prefer to write a series or standalone? And give us your reasoning behind it. Why do you want to do that? And uh, once again, thank you for joining us here at Second Drafts Podcast. Uh, be uh, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on everything you need to write, edit, and publish your way. And let us know what you'd like to see from us in future podcasts. And we'll see you next time. Cheers, guys. Do you want to support production of this YouTube series? Visit www.patreon.com slash and become a patron today.